Bookaholics is a safe place for reading junkies who obsess over books, authors, bookstores, book news, and book trivia. We'll nerd out with book reviews, author interviews, our habit, and other bookish things. Here is your host, Deirdre Pippins. Good morning, Heather. Thank you for joining the Bookaholic podcast. Good morning, Deirdre. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. I am really uh, chomping at the bit and getting into your story uh, and and, and understanding more about this journey of yours. So your book is called Paid to be Perfect, correct? Yes, it's Paid to be Perfect, The Secret to Finding Your Perfect. So the the whole book is about my perfect, what works for me, what's worked for me um, in an over 30-year modeling career. Um, stay at the exact same measurements. Um, so it's my nutrition journey, it's my fitness journey, it's my wellness journey, and there's a skincare chapter because I love skincare and that's a part of aging as well. Um, yeah, so it, it's everything that I do. It's my perfect. It's um, you know kind of my memoir of, of everything that I've learned along the way in an effort to help the reader find their perfect, uh, which isn't going to look exactly like my perfect, you know? Right, right, right. Well, that that's I'm glad you made that statement because one of the things I was going to talk to you about uh, in this whole thing is how do people receive the title of the book in this era of um, non shaming uh, for people's sizes and this type of thing? But you make it clear that this is about your uh, fitness journey, finding your perfect. But right. other people can find their perfect based mm-hmm. on what you're speaking of in the book. Yeah, hundred percent. So the word perfect is even a, a very tri- tricky word because people try to be perfect as this destination point. I don't view mm-hmm. the word perfect as a destination point. I view the word perfect as a process. You know, the perfection of the process and and seeing the perfection of your own journey. I also believe you know even though none of us are perfect, you know, um, perfect, and we're never going to do things 100% perfectly. Inherently, just because we're here, I believe we're all perfect at our core, you know, just as beings that that have come to bring our own special gifts and our own special light into the world. So, um, so yeah, so I believe that we're all perfect inherently. Mm-hmm. And I believe that our process is is uh, um, all a part of the perfection. And so when I talk about the word perfect, and I lay that out right in the beginning, it's not about striving to be a perfect that, that is a destination point that you see somebody else have that you, mm-hmm. you're like, I want that. That's perfect. It's not mm-hmm. about, that. It's about seeing the perfection of your own process and honoring, you know, what you need. And you know, innately, um, what what's perfect for you no one out there can tell you what it is i can't tell you what it is i can show you my path and i can you know be a guide but i can't you know point anyone in the direction of their own perfect it has to come from within for sure most most definitely and i think the word perfect has fallen in that same chasm as normal you know, normal and perfect. They're kind of aligned in that area. Uh, and so speaking of normal, back in the day, I remember um, insurance companies, and they still may have these, but they had the insurance companies perfect or normal scale of height versus weight. And that's how they would determine if they were going to give, that was one of the ways uh, that's how they would determine it if they were going to give a person insurance. So okay. if you were five foot two, and 250 pounds, that was not part of their, you know, <laughs> normal or perfect weight. What would you say to um, to that type of thought? Uh, five foot two, 250, you know, women are really appreciating their curves. You see it on social media. On one, on one hand, you have young people, teenagers looking at seemingly perfect bodies, on one hand, and then on another, you've got your girls that's really flaunting their curves, no matter what weight or size or height. What would you say to all of that almost sort of confusing messages going on? I think that the messages are really confusing, but I think it's great that we do have the platforms that we can see all the different points of view. I think when I was growing up, you know, I'm 52. When I was growing up, we saw only the one 
um, you know, accepted form of beauty, you know, the Kate Mosses and the super skinny models, you know, of the day and, um, you know, and the one color, you know, and uh, the black models kind of came along as, as I was, you know, growing up too. But, um, you know, we didn't see as much diversity in, 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 uh, physicality period you know what i mean in in in, in shapes and in colors and in hair styles um so i think it's getting better because of social media because you can see all the different body types um what i would say back to your other point though is it doesn't matter what height or what size you are it's how do you feel if you come from the perspective of how do i feel if you're five two and you weigh you know 250 pounds and you don't feel good that's not the right size for you it, right. it, it's about how do you feel? Are you able to, you know, play with your kids or play with your grandkids? You know, are you you're able to get up and down a flight of stairs, you know, comfortably without huffing and puffing? You know, I'm not yeah. talking about running a marathon. Are you able to live your life comfortably? You know, and, right. and, and, and you know, are you able to get a good night's sleep? You know, these are the, the questions that you need to ask yourself. And if you're not feeling good, what can you do to feel better rather right. than on a number on a scale you know have those those, those tools available to, to to check in but that's not the focus that's the the, the you know the, the the tool available to use to, to check in but right. you know focus on what how do you feel how are you feeling today how are you feeling most days you know and we're right. all perfect every day but right. most days how do you feel you know Exactly. Exactly. I agree with you 100%. Well, now let's dive into your journey. And first of all, I think the audience needs to know what exactly is a fit model versus any other type of model. I guess when people think about models, they just think about one thing, models in catalogs, models on the catwalk. Um, so what is a fit model actually? Well, the fit model essentially is working with pattern makers and designers and merchandisers to perfect the fit of a garment. Um, and then that garment is then mass produced. It's sized up or down and then mass produced. So you're working in house um, with a particular company and you have to stay at the exact same size of their mannequin form, their fit form. Um, and in my case, my contract was I had to stay within plus or minus half an inch of my fit form. And so the Ooh. question is get, yeah, and I had a 10 consecutive year contract from age 26 to 36. And then I stopped right. modeling and became a mom. Mm -hmm. And then it was uh, 46. One of my clients reached out to me and said, are you still the same size at 46? And I thought, I think I am. I'm doing the same things that I, <clears throat> excuse me, that I normally do because it makes me feel good. You know, I'm doing my fitness and my nutrition the way that I do it because this is this is what feels good to me. This is what helps me, you know, get through my days and be a good mom. I don't know what size I am. I guess I'm the same size. So I went in and I got yeah. measured and I was. So I went back at 46. So that's really how the book came about. People ask me, how have you maintained your exact same measurements throughout your entire modeling career? They think I starved myself. They think I, you know, work out obsessively. I don't work out obsessively. I work out daily, but, you know, half hour run, you know, an hour yoga class, you know, things like that um, that feel good to me. Mm -hmm. um, so the question prompted the book to explain, you know, what I do. These are the things that I do that keep me at my natural size. And, and the point is, mm -hmm. this is my natural size. This isn't me going against nature, trying to force myself into some mold. It was luck, really. Right. It happened to measure, you know, very similar to their, their mannequin form. And, and because it's my natural size, was able to stay there easily and effortlessly. So what I try to teach the reader is that they, too, can stay at their natural size easily and effortlessly if they're eating in a way that supports their body, that supports, you know, uh, them in a way to help them feel good and there, there's no willpower involved there, there's there's nothing tricky really about the way that i eat it's about you know finding the, the the foods that make you feel good innately finding movement that works for your body and mm -hmm. and using that throughout your life you know because it makes you feel good not because it makes you look a particular way and then mm -hmm. you're going to naturally look at your best because of that you know right right, right. you know everybody's food and exercise journey looks so different and listening to you um, being able to be very consistent. I mean, what you have <laughs> is gold, you know? And so 
for example, myself, you know, at one time in my life, as I was a teenager, I was a cheerleader. Um, I also studied ballet for 10 years. So thank goodness, I still have that kind of base to my body, um, you know, that a lot of people my age do not have. Uh, You shared that you're 52, I'm 56. And so, you know, that's that's where I lie. And but then, you know, after I had children, my body was a whole different ball of wax. It took me years and years and years to get back to what I am now, which is not where I ultimately want to be, but back to some type of who really Deirdre is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just fluctuates so enormously. After the pandemic, not after the pandemic, let me just say this, because we're kind of like not necessarily post pandemic. So I don't want to put out false information, but we still have COVID-19 in our society. But after the shutdown, everybody had gained an enormous amount of weight. And I, along with other people, I after after a while, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I've got to go to the gym. I have got to just put on a mask and find a gym with the, all the clean protocols. And that's what I did. And I went to the gym, but exercise, although it tones me, it does not make me lose weight. I cannot lose weight by exercise alone. I have to incorporate some kind of eating plan with the exercise. And I almost have to do an eating plan alone, lose the weight, and then go back to work out. That's what I have found out for me. And it's just kind of like a, just a very weird situation. Um, And so I went back to the gym. I worked out with a personal trainer, did well, toned up, still didn't lose weight. So then I had to go into a program I purchased into to help me actually shed the weight. What would you say to a person like that? That's just so strange that exercise actually does not help me to lose weight. Well, exercise, you know, can build muscle. And so, you know, that won't make you lose weight. You know, you'll actually gain a little bit because you're building muscle. You know, your body, you know, it's changing. Um, It's going from fat to muscle. So you might gain a little bit of weight because of that. But I also think, um, as you were talking about, you know, your life stages and, you know, gaining and then losing, I think that a lot of times, you know, women in particular get so busy and, and they get, they get sidetracked and they don't, they put everything else first and they put their kids first and they put their, their work first and they put everything else first um, and kind of forget about their health. And, and then they get a little further off track than what feels good within them, you know? No. Yeah. And so I think that because we try to get everything else done out there, out there, they're out there, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the reverse is what we should really do, which is try to get everything done in here first. So right. that we're most energy and we feel the best for, for everyone around us, for our kids, for our you know families, for our husbands, for our partners, for our, you know, for our bosses, um, you know, so that we have the most energy. And it just, a lot of times that gets thrown by the wayside. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's possibly what happened to me. So I've taken charge, you know, like, We've been all over the place all summer. I had one son move to Los Angeles, so we had to help him with his move. I had one son volunteer at a film festival, so we did that. And we were away for weeks and weeks at a time. So I knew my eating was going to get completely derailed and off track. So I'm trying to come back down to my eating plan, but do it gradually and not drastically so that it can stick. And, you know, I've taken action to block off Mondays as a day off. And on Mondays, I will do my Pilates. So that's my first thing and getting back to being fit. Um, But and it will be adding on other you know, opportunities to stay fit. And I don't want to do a lot of hard and fast training like I'm going for the Olympics. I I want to do just like you said, I want to feel good and have some type of routine, workout routine that just matches me, my personality, something that I can enjoy. What would you say to a person out there that's facing that, that they just don't want to 
people actually sometimes they just don't want to breathe hard. <laughs> they don't want to sweat. What do you say? I, well, I would say, first of all, you know, you're talking about like, you know, you having a few weeks here and there where you're not even on your, your, your routine, you know, for sure. I have the same thing this summer. We were traveling a couple weeks in, in uh, mm -hmm. July, early July, we went to Italy. I was eating all these rich foods and stuff and drinking more wine than I normally drink. Cause yes. I you have to. And I came back and I was definitely heavier than my normal. I didn't freak out. I just went back to my normal healthy habits. And it just, you know, a month or so later, I look at the scale and I'm like, oh, there, I'm exactly back. I didn't try at all. So, I, so my, my advice to anyone uh, just in general is healthy habits. You just create those healthy habits that even if you veer from those healthy habits, because we all will, we'll all veer from them yeah. even weekly. You know, I recommend, you know, every week to give yourself a special treat of some sort just because you right. want it. It's not a part of your normal healthy habits um, or, or, or more, you know, if, if you're if you're feeling like it. But, you know, back to the workout then the, the, the for people that don't want to you know exert any energy. I don't think that you need to, to do, you know. Any workout that you hate, I think that moving your body is is all that's required. Moving your body for 30 mm -hmm. minutes a day. You know, I know people that walk every day for 30 minutes. You know, they mm -hmm. just simply walk every day for 30 minutes. You're getting, mm -hmm. if, if it's outside rather than on a treadmill, you're getting a little bit of vitamin D, which is healthy too. You know, you're in nature, you know, so, so you're getting all these benefits of, of you know, just being outside as well. So even just a 30 minute walk, anything to move your body for 30 minutes a day is going to be helpful. And you just, it, it's just, it's just an energetic shift. Sometimes I think, you know, I'm, I'm too tired to work out, but then right. I know how I'm going to feel after I work out and I know it's actually going to give me energy. So I right. do it. And then after I work out, I'm like, Oh my God, thank God I worked out. You know? <laughs> yes. Yes. I felt that as well. Yeah. Now, what would you say to, um, I've taken like this online test before, but it's proven true for me and I've done it at different increments, different time frames. I'm a person who has to have protein in order to lose weight. So I'm a protein, protein, protein person. I talked with a friend uh, at lunch one day and I was sharing this with her. She took a test she has to have carbs. She's very tiny. She's extremely tiny. She seems to look to me the same as she did in college. Uh, she would say no, but, but so what, I mean, what is that about? I've never heard about someone needing carbs in order to well, stay. I think there's a lot of different, you know, theories out there. You know, I, I remember back, I read this book years ago called The Blood Type Diet. And it said, even if you have different blood types, that yeah. you have different requirements. And I don't know, you know, which is true and which is not. All I know is that we're all different bodies. We're all completely individual and unique. And we all do have different requirements. And my husband eats more protein than I eat. Um, yeah. I do protein, um, especially as I age. I feel like, you know, even in even though we're all unique and we have our own needs, those change too over time. So you may need to tweak what you're doing, what you did at you know, 30 years old might be a little different from, from what your body requires at 50 years old. So yeah. I think not paying attention to other people, I think listening to what, finding, you know, when you read my book, I talk about, you know, healthy whole foods versus packaged foods. You know, there's there's a lot of information um, in my book about finding the foods that work for your body while I list out, you know, what works for my body, which may not work for your body, you know. Um, but, but, but finding those, you, you can't survive on, you know, junk. It, it, your, your body's going to react. You, you're going to, it's, it's not going to work. So if you're eating all the healthy whole foods, then it's about fine tuning those healthy whole foods and figuring out, Oh, I need, you know, more fish or I need more red meat or I need more, you know, whatever that is, or, Oh, I really need some whole grains. Like I need quinoa. Like I can feel when I need, you know, more whole grains. Like I just, yeah. can feel it. you know, it, it's and a lot of it depends on my workout too. Sometimes, you know, I'll need more than others. And sometimes it depends on the season. Sometimes in the winter, I'll, I'll eat a little differently than in the summer. So yeah. I think not following your neighbor, um, you know, using other people as guides, you know, listening in on what works and then check in with your body and try something and see, see how, pay attention to how you feel. I think that we've gotten so, um, you know, uh, oh, far away from from asking ourselves what works, you know, and if as long yeah. as 
eating the healthy foods that, that, that our bodies required, then we can tune in and really dive in and see what are those things, how much more protein do I need? Let, let me eat this, this salmon meal and see how I feel. And then tomorrow night, let me eat this other meal, you know, full of, you know, pasta and see how I feel, you know, and, and, and then just check in, see how your body, see, see if you want to work out, see how your body does. And, you know, those are the kinds of things that you can do um, that really make you feel even better when you're eating a healthy diet. Yes, most definitely. Well, let's dive into um, one of your chapters. It's called My Perfect Foods, Chapter 6. What are some of your perfect foods? Well, I just mentioned a couple of them. Um, and it's funny because I actually didn't eat fish for a long, long time. But now yeah. I've, incorporated, I've incorporated salmon a couple times a week. Um, I eat quinoa pretty much every day. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a beans and whole grains kind of girl. Um, you know, it's like, it's, it's the, the most inexpensive food you can eat, you know, it's just beans, yes. and grains, you know, so beans and rice, beans and all different kinds of beans and vegetables. Um, that would be, those are my staples. Um, and then I incorporate, you know, you know, salmon, like I said, um, other fruits and vegetables, um, you know, potatoes and you know, things like that. But beans and whole grains are really my staples. Um, I, yeah. I a little bit of dairy. As, as I've aged, I can't eat as much. I love dairy. I would eat dairy every yeah. day. <laughs> but I noticed as I've grown older, my body doesn't like dairy as much. So I can't eat as much dairy. And it's those kinds of things we just, a lot of people, a lot of people just ignore those, those, those cues. And we just keep eating the things that don't agree with us. And that's mm -hmm. the problem. You know, I can't mm -hmm. eat the things that I used to eat, you know, and, and at the same, you know, quantity unfortunately, of some of the things that I really like, because it just makes my body feel kind of gross and doesn't mm -hmm. you know, work well. Mm -hmm. I just, um, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, one of the things I've discovered in my um, eating journey, inflammation. Inflammation plays a huge part in being able to be the size and the desirable size for you. You know, uh, what advice would you give? I had to learn through uh, purchasing into different eating plans and diet plans and working with different professionals. Um, what would you say to folks out there that might not know what kind of part inflammation plays into your uh, dieting or eating journey? I think the first thing is to strip down their food to healthy whole plant foods um, and incorporate, you know, a bit of, of whatever um, lean proteins they like. I think the first thing is to strip down, um, you know, all the, the packaged foods and keep, keep those away because those are a lot of times the problems. And then, then once you have the, the clean diet, the clean whole food diet, you can mm -hmm. see, is it corn or is it, you know, what are my food sensitivities now? You know, you can't really do that if you're eating, you know, McDonald's every day for breakfast, you know, yeah. you're out your day with donuts or, you know, grease or, you know, you can't really feel those, those cues. Um, you know, obviously check in with your doctor and see, you know, what they think. Um, but if you're eating a healthy whole you know, whole food diet, you can then tune in and see, you know, like, like I can see with dairy, unfortunately, that I just don't you know, process as well. Um, but you can't do that unless your diet's clean to begin with. Um, so that would be my first thing, clean up your diet and then, yeah. fine, and then fine tune. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's exactly great advice. Now tell us a little bit about your fitness. Um, uh, you say you work out 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes a day. Yeah, usually most days. Yeah. And honestly, it's because it makes me feel good. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I run like about, you know, 30 minutes, uh, two or three times a week. And I do yoga three or four times a week, just depending on, you know, the weather and, you know, what classes I can get to. Um, I mm -hmm. do aerial yoga twice a week and what you would think of as regular yoga. Um, mm -hmm or ashtanga based uh, twice a week and sometimes i'll throw in a pilates class once a week um so it's just these are the things that are like a part of my routine and i i know how they make me feel and so yeah every day i just try to do something physically active and i also grew up dancing um so i think too when you grow up you know with with physical activity it, it just it feels good to your body to kind of keep that um keep that going but it, it goes back to the theory of um move it or lose it you know if you're if you're not gonna have movement in your body it's gonna be difficult to get up a flight of stairs so i yes. just have to be able to 
use my body, um, you know, efficiently and be able to have movement in my life. Um, and so, yeah, I just think right. most definitely, most definitely. Well, you know, definitely, um, wellness and your mindset have to play a part. What, um, do you do to set your mind, uh, and get you in that place for living a whole complete and full, uh, life? Yeah, I have a chapter, uh, the wellness chapter in my book. It goes into mm -hmm. the depth. I have several, you know, tips and tricks that I use um, because you know life is tough. Every you know time we think we have everything figured out and the day's going well, something comes up and shoo, you know. I mean, we all know this with the pandemic. Like, just what a whirlwind it is just to get through right. the days and days, you know, that we have on on, on this earth. So, right. when I was thirty. I um, I. Uh, bought myself a gift on my 30th birthday gift to myself was TM transcendental meditation, getting instruction in transcendental meditation. So I've done that twice a day, every day since I was 30, it takes 20 minutes, um, twice a day. Yeah. And I, and I, so, so the cool thing about that was, you know, I gave that to myself when I was 30 and because I was modeling, I had my son late. I waited until I was 38 to get pregnant. Um, so other women, um, I think, you know, they have kids and they get busy. The cool thing with, with having Tia before I became a mom was I already had that foundation that I'm taking 20 minutes a, twice a day out of my day every day, um, mm -hmm. regardless of the fact that I'm a mom or whatever I'm doing, um, which really helped me, you know, it, it's helped me with, with becoming a mom. It's helped me with everything and it helped my modeling career. It's just, it gives me a center. It gives me a base. Um, it's just a tuning in, you know, it's, you, you sit there, you have a mantra that you repeat in your head for 20 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. your mind drips, you just come back to the mantra and it's really simple and easy and you can sit and do it anywhere. I've done it in airplanes and airports and cars and offices and, you know, mm -hmm. where I am that I can just sit and, you know, be silent for 20 minutes, um, twice a day, every day. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, you sound super, super, super disciplined. I mean, that's quite a feat to be able to do TM twice a day since you were 30. And so that's, that's phenomenal. What advice would you yeah, well, give? Well, let me just interrupt. It sounds disciplined, but I do, I do multitask with it just a little bit. I use my LED. I have an LED mask. I put that on my face sometimes when I'm doing it in the morning. So I'm doing a beauty thing too, sometimes in the morning when I do oh. it. Um, and in the, in the afternoons, it's just my, like my reset before I have to do dinner and things. So it just, it, it, it sounds like a lot, but it's not, it doesn't, I mean, if you think about it, you can be on social media for 20 minutes like that without even thinking about it. And so it's instead, it's instead of the unhealthy, whatever unhealthy distraction that I would do, which I still do, right. <laughs> you know, but I just take the time out just to do that instead. Wow. Okay. Yes. And I see how that could uh, be worked out just as you yeah. described. Now, just to, for a little bit, I want to just touch base on chapter eight skincare. And like you, I am a skincare fiend. Um, when I was 16, I had a horrible bout with acne. And so I did a lot of, you know, at the time reading 17 magazine and whatever else was out at the time. And um, I got Neutrogena and Neutrogena's acne formula that helped clear up my skin. And so I've been a um, skincare person ever since. Uh, I use different skincare. I keep my skin guessing. I'll go back and forth between different skincares and it depends on if it's summer or winter, what skincare regimens I use. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays is when I do my deep cleaning of my skincare. Uh, what uh, What are you uh, saying in your chapter about skincare? Well, first of all, you can tell that you uh, really pay attention to your skincare because you said you're 56 and your skin looks gorgeous. Um, so it's working for you, whatever you're doing. Uh, but I remember I, I used the same products when I was younger, too. I think that the, um, the, the main advice I would is I don't care, you know, what your pigment is. I still recommend sunscreen every Every skin shape oh, yeah. out sunscreen is my number one. I, yeah. I love silk pillowcases for right. my hair and for my skin. A lot of people don't yeah. know that trick. <clears throat> and that's in my book. 
excuse me. Um, and then I just, I believe in serums. I believe in, um, you know, I, I use retinol and vitamin C serums and all different kinds of serums. And like you, I kind of switch it out. I'm not married to any particular uh, products that it, I just kind of use what kind of works and then I experiment mm. and try and then come back to others um, Yeah, and I think you know a great moisturizer that, that you love taking all your makeup off before you go to bed every night Or if you're giving yourself a clean clean face every night. Like I said, I use an LED mask Lately, mm -hmm. I'm loving this jade roller that I use to kind yes. of like, yeah, do it do a daily face It just feels good. I'm, I'm into yeah. anything that feels good Across yeah. so so nutrition wise, I'm into anything that feels good. Um, fitness wise, I'm into anything that feels good, and skincare wise, same thing. Now, yes, Botox I did try for a minute. Doesn't feel good. <laughs> it hurts. It's like needles in my face. Doesn't yeah. feel good. It's expensive. I'm not saying yeah. I'll never try it again. I tried it like maybe five, six years ago. Uh, I'm not saying I'll never try it again. You know, maybe when I get older, I'll venture into it again. We'll see. But right. now it doesn't make me feel good. Um, so injectables are not really my favorite. I think mm -hmm. you know, wait, 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 wait until you absolutely think you need to try something like that. Anything invasive has a risk. So I'm very risk adverse and I'm very pain adverse. That's so right. I don't do those things. I don't do those. That's why I like the LED mask because it's just, it's light. It's just, you know, you sit there and it's, you know, um, so nice and goodness. yeah. So let me ask you about the LED mask. I think I've seen, and I've used these products too, Dennis Gross. I think he's maybe a dermatologist. Have you seen his products? No. Okay. Um, but I think he does have an LED mask. It's like $450. But, <laughs> but you know, hey, if it's going to right. do what you need it to do and, you know, help your skin, it's possibly worth the investment. But I think it's, I'm just trying to make sure I understand what the LED mask is. And I think he has one. Yeah, I, there are a lot out there. You could honestly go to Amazon. I'm sure there's more competitive prices out there. Um, mm -hmm. That um, you know, so I, I don't know if I, I mine wasn't four hundred dollars. I think it was like okay. fifty. Okay. The time. I've had it for like four years, um, mm -hmm. and I don't use it every day. It's just one of the the, the tools and you know tools in my toolbox of skincare. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's a red, it's a white mask with red lights. Um, yeah. Light, you know, and I do feel like even when I have like a little bit of acne that, that springs up, and I feel like, I, and I don't know, you know, what helps what it could be all the serums I use too, but right. I do think it helps that a little bit too. Um, I also have a, I forget what it's called, but it's that zapping thing that that the that, that the uh, shoot, I can't remember, it, it's a wand, um, yeah, I can't remember the name of it, but I have that too, and yeah. Don't use that as much because it requires you have to put oil on your face and then you have to slather it around. But I do have that too. And it's kind of the same because it uses the same light. Um, yeah. But the LED mask is just easier. And I'm just like into what, whatever is easy. Uh, but that's yes. another one that wouldn't be so expensive as an LED mask. Um, right. I think of the name. I can't think of it. But you know what I'm talking about? What you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I know what you're talking about 100%. Wow. So, you know, this is just, you know, a whole involving, I think this is definitely a book worth people reading for the fact that it goes from head to toe, inside and outside. And I, I think it could get people off of that um, hamster track that, you know, they're just going around and around and around. This will make you stop. And this will make you think and adjust yourself appropriately and do what's right for you. I think this is a great message and uh, definitely can't wait for my audience to see and hear this interview. Thank you so much. And I agree. It's really about creating healthy habits and what are those habits mm -hmm. that serve you and, mm -hmm. and just, just incorporating as many. And it doesn't have to be a total overhaul. It can be, but it can just be, you know, this is the step that works for me today. And I'm going to incorporate this particular healthy habit. And then maybe I'll incorporate another one in a month or, in, you know, mm -hmm. and just, just kind of just, 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 just tweak your, 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 your routine and just feel how that feels. And then you're even more motivated to make more healthy habits uh, a part of your routine. Wonderful. What a great message. Now, Heather, how can people uh, find you uh, on social media, etc.? 
Yeah, so I have a website. It's called paidtobeperfect.com. And you can go there. There's links to buy my book there on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And there's also links to my social media on Instagram, which I'm at Heather's book on Instagram and at Paid to Be Perfect on Twitter and Facebook. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we certainly will have your links in this uh, podcast show notes as well as in the description box on the YouTube channel. So people will be able to reach out to you from there. And Heather, I just want to say thank you for this wonderful message. And we appreciate you sharing your journey with us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much.